The nest is right on this cliff here, on the far side of the creek. All right. We can see it from here, I take it. Yeah, we have a good view of it up here, actually. It's just up on that cliff there, that mound of moss. Oh, be darn. Wow, that's amazing. Can we that sit down and look? Yeah, sure. We should have a good view of it here. There comes the adult right there. What timing, huh? We're here up Kootenai Creek, a smaller tributary that drains into the Bitterroot River, which itself drains into the Clark Fork, which goes into the Columbia River Basin out to the Pacific Ocean. This stream is much narrower than the Bitterroot. Notice the riparian vegetation is only 20 meters wide on either side of the water. But up here, there's a bird that's very restricted to this sort of riparian situation. And I've joined here Sophie Osborne, who's doing research on this special bird, the American Dipper. We'll find out something about the biology of this bird. So, so there's the nest. There's the nest, as you said. And the Dipper is an amazing bird, as you mentioned. Um, it's North America's only truly aquatic songbird. So they'll just dive into these raging creeks here in water that we couldn't even hope to stand up in. They are totally comfortable diving in, and they fly right out of there. So these dippers, I see them dropping right into the water. They're, what are they doing? They're beating their wings, flying to where? Straight down to the bottom? Oftentimes, straight down to the bottom. Yeah, the current isn't quite as strong as the bottom, and they use their wings to help them get down there and to keep them down there. And sometimes they kind of use their legs to move along the bottom and uh, dig under rocks and things for aquatic invertebrates. Mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies are the primary things that they're feeding on. So sometimes they'll actually turn over rocks underwater, or else they'll feed along the margins, just probing uh, with their bills between the rocks. They live in this incredibly loud environment. Oh, here it comes again. Okay, there it is. Dip, dip, dip. Right. Oh, look at those white eyelids. So some people think that that might be how they communicate to each other. If they can't hear each other over this loud environment, they dip and they blink those white eyelids, which are more visible over a long distance. There it goes upstream again. Oh, oh right there it in goes, the water. diving right in the water. Isn't that incredible? Every few minutes, you'll see one of the adults flying from upstream or downstream, bringing in food to the nestlings. This nest, this, this nest is amazing. I mean, when, when I look out here, we're probably the only ones on this trail that know there's a nest there. It's so cryptic. I know, I've seen so many people walk right by them and never even notice them. I think the only way you'd notice them really is the birds flying back and forth to the nest. They find areas that are really safe from predators. They nest on these cliffs and boulders, and there's, as you can see, just raging whitewater. There's really nothing that can get at that nest. And it's really well protected from the elements. It has a really thick layer of moss and grasses that kind of absorb the water. And then inside, there's a nice cup that's made of leaves or of pine needles. So I see a little hole. So they're going up. It's kind of like a gorge shape. They're going up in, and then there's a cup inside exactly. in which the little nestlings exactly. are sitting so they don't tumble out. And... Right. There he is again. There it is. Tell me something about your, your research interest. Well, I've been looking at what sort of factors determine why dippers are occurring where they're occurring, and with a particular emphasis on the effect of streamside development that's occurring on a lot of the dippers' range. So I've been looking at the effect of development on dippers on these creeks, and that also brings up some interesting questions, like dippers are now using bridges that people have basically provided for them. It provides a great nest site for right. them. But I wanted to find out how are they doing on these types of bridges. I mean, these are areas that are more disturbed by people um, that might be more vulnerable to flooding or predation. So I wanted to see how these dippers were actually doing in those types of areas. In my system here, the streams are pretty pristine. And the dippers seem to be doing well. I mean, in terms of development that doesn't affect the streams themselves, it doesn't seem to affect the dippers. So bridges are a great thing for dippers. The bridges are a great thing for dippers. They provide more nest sites for dippers. And one thing that's interesting is that bridges usually occur at the low elevations, uh -huh. and dippers nest earlier at the lower elevations than at the higher elevations, which is where the natural nest sites, the cliffs and the boulders, are located. And so dippers on bridges can nest earlier, and then often they can actually get two broods in during a year. They have one nest, fledge young, and then have another nest. This is a special experience, Anna. Thank you for taking time this afternoon. 
show us your dippers, dipper nest, dippers diving in the water. I think I want to sit here for another hour or two and just soak some more of this up. Well, thanks for coming with me. I love sharing them. They're amazing birds to watch and a lot of fun.